I am building a live rig. I've already got a live rig, but wasn't really what I needed for the type of stuff that I'm gonna be doing. Um, and by the way, this isn't everything. We've got a couple things on back order that I'm still waiting on. So before I get started, I want to quickly pop over and take a look at my current rig. So pardon while I play with gadgets. This is what I'm currently running. It is a positive grid bias rack and I've got a Korg pitch black tuner in there, a Furman power conditioner, and I use a super old, um, but still digital wireless. Let's see if we can dig that up. It's actually really nice wireless. It's just doesn't really serve the purpose of more professional shows. So, Probably best we start with the case. And this is kind of insult to injury situation because I just bought one of these for this new rig. I mean, that case over there is probably maybe six, eight months old or something like that. And I need more space for all this stuff. So upgrade time. Yes. I absolutely love the Gator cases. They are so freaking sturdy. I've never seen one of them fail. Other than these right here, I've seen someone break one of these little tabs. But other than that, I think they're pretty sturdy. One down. Okay, gonna need some speak on cables for my power amp, which is not here by the way, it's on back order. Okay, this does kind of feel like second Christmas. Now what bums me out is that I'm gonna be able to get all this together, but I'm not going to be able to hook anything up to my cabinet because my power amp isn't here, as well as a couple other things. But this is the brain of the operations anyway. So I opted for the Helix rack. Sort of the tipping point where I just decided that I was not going to be able to run the bias um, live is because I can't run dual amps. So I can't have a proper stereo sound coming out of my, uh, my rig. It's gonna sound very mono, even if, the, uh, even if the sound man is able to give me some post-processing to sort of fatten it up a little bit, it's still going to sound just kind of like one single guitar. Now that, among other things, I'm a little shaky on the bias, um, the, you know, the overall, I don't want to say quality, but just the overall, um, okay, I'll just say it. So <laughs> I sent my positive grid bias rack back two times. So I've had three bias racks and the first one was faulty. The second one was faulty for the exact same reason. And the third one was, uh, Beautiful. I mean, it's been perfect, but it does worry me a little bit. And reading up a lot on their um, reliability, there aren't a ton of reports of those things failing, you know, in the middle of live sessions or something, but just the fact that it feels like it's a more entry level to higher end gear. I'm a little worried about something like that, taking it on, on the road. What I do plan on doing is getting a secondary HX stomp as my backup rig, just something that I can have in case something like this fails. So that is probably what's going to uh, get me through some kind of oh shit scenario. But I mean, the positive grid sounds great. Let's see what we got. Oh, I suppose I should open this first. I say that like it's not that big of a deal. I mean, the pedal's $500 just to be able to operate this from the floor. Ironically, we're gonna be switching all of our effects through MIDI, so I'll probably be mostly just using this in practice and in the event that our MIDI fails live. I don't feel like it was the funnest purchase or the most um, value for my money, but anywho, rambling, because that's what I do. Ooh, okay. Oh, it's so exciting. So. So I've been looking at these um, since the day they came out and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. And ever since I've been drooling over it, didn't really want to dump a bunch of money into one since I already kind of went um, the positive grid route. 
kind of a must have nowadays if you want to have a portable rig that is going to give you all the flexibility in the world. Ouch! Box cut. I know there's an Axe FX which my bases use, which I was looking at the Axe FX 3 and I really was interested, but I'm just used to the Helix interface from having played with it. So it makes sense for me to use this and it does everything that I need it to do. And I've always enjoyed line six products. So why not, right? So why did I get a rack instead of the pedal? I'm a fan of rack gear. Oh my God, that is so gorgeous. Oh, look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I wanna be able to run this thing in a, in a rack. I wanna be able to run it direct to house. I want to be able to run it at practice. I wanna be able to run it with a cab live if, if the situation calls for it. Um, and it makes sense to have a rack because all that can be contained in one single unit. Yeah, so it looks like the Helix floor. It really does, minus the big screen and all the knobbies, but it's got the same feel, minus the expression pedal. Why they would not give you an expression pedal for this? I don't know. But they do have cool things like individual screens for each little button, so you can assign names to it and you don't have to have tape. I mean, it's a little gratuitous for sure. But, I mean, if you're going to be spending, like, let's say, $200 on a switch pedal and then turn around and not be able to do things like, you know, actually properly operate the Helix. This is all sort of built to manage the Helix rack without external devices or even using your hands. So this plus a uh, Seymour Duncan Power Stage 700 is my rack. Oh, plus this. So cooling, I was a little concerned about, may or may not be an issue, but just in case, I put together this cool little fan USB uh, rack space. So this is going to plug right into the power on my Furman, which I am stealing from this rack. It'll keep things cool. And if I don't need it, I don't need it, but it's there. Okay, so the Line 6 Relay G90, I could have gone with a, uh, you know, a lower model of the Relay series. I could have gone with a Shure GLX D series, uh, something like that. The half rack thing doesn't really matter to me because I'm going to have to fill out a full rack anyway. And it's not like I'm putting my in-ears in my rack. They, so, you know, it's, I got to do, do something with the space. Uh, also you have the ability to put the antennas on the front on this rack unit as where with the Shure uh, GLX series, they are on the back and it's a half rack unit, which means that you have to get additional parts to reroute it to the front. So after everything is said and done, even though this is a little more expensive than uh, one of the GLX uh, models that I was looking at, it ends up evening out pretty much um, at the end of the day. So since I've already got the Helix rack and this will go right above it, seems to make sense. Let's pop it open. Let's cut the tape. I've been drooling over this since it came out. I love how I'm buying wireless equipment and I don't plan on gigging for probably four months. But, you know, might as well get the whole rack build out of the way, right? All right, I think it's time to start assembling. So this kind of bums me out that I don't have the um, power stage with me because obviously, you know, that's gonna kind of fit into the rack. And I've heard that it's just a little bit bigger than a uh, one U, it's like a one and a half U space. So I do have to take that into consideration, um, you know, just to make sure that I've got plenty of space. But that doesn't mean that I can't play in the meantime. So let's do this. This guy will go, let's say, right in here somewhere. I think I'm gonna put the fans on the back. If you've ever spent time putting together a rack, you will know that it takes some trial and error to fit things the way you want it. And this one's gonna be no different. I really don't have a goal here other than to just kind of fit things and 
decide how it makes the most sense. Obviously you want to try to keep the heaviest weight on the bottom where possible to keep things from being top heavy. So something that kind of sucks with this build is that I still have projects that I'm working on that are using the sounds off of the positive grid and I could use the uh, bias amp software to uh, to sort of just you know emulate the the amp and it will sound the same if I fiddle with it enough with you know with reamping which is what I do anyway but at the end of the, oh okay <laughs> but at the end of the day I end up um, spending a lot more time noodling with plugins and I don't like plugins I use them as little as possible when it comes to guitar gear I'd much rather reamp directly through an actual amp, which hopefully I can hang on to the bias rack long enough to do that. There we go. It's helix time. Helix is a three rack unit, which makes it a little gaudy. You know what? May end up just putting the power conditioner on the bottom, or I should say on the back. So the power stage is 2.2 inches. So that means that there has to be a gap between this and this. So let's say this is the power stage. I'm going to have to run this like this. Probably put it in the center here. I guess it does give it a little more airspace. And then the ferment is going to have to go in the back, which sucks, but I guess in the end it doesn't really matter. Especially if I just keep it on the bottom, which will hopefully distribute weight a little bit. So that's in there, that's in there. It's not going anywhere. Let's flip it over. It's gonna have to go at the very, very top in the back. Let's just hope that it doesn't interfere with the power stage. I do love that they have rack mounts on both sides. That helps so much. While I'm doing this, talking through the positive grid a little bit, the, uh, the big problem that I have with the bias rack, they built the software knowing that they were gonna be able to run it live with a power amp and it would sound great, but they didn't really think too much about features for um, someone that might be wanting to do something like what I'm doing, which is run dual amps on a single guitar don't hate it at all. I mean, I really like the tones that I get out of the, the bias. I've never really cranked it at a show or anything, but from what I can tell, you know, it, it holds up in a live situation just like it would in the uh, studio. The interface it leaves a little bit to be desired. It's, a, it's messy. And the, uh, the community where you can download new tones, that's terribly messy, but it's very valuable. And then also it doesn't have effects built in, which is means that I have to, you know, I probably should have actually led with that now that I think about it. It doesn't have anything but reverb built in and a gate, which are two very important things, but far from all you need. So that means that you have to have a pedal board. So at the very, or, or pedals or, you know, whatever configuration you want, but at the very least that, you know, $1,300 or whatever it costs uh, retail, now turns into that plus the cost of whatever external um, devices that you need to get. The Helix Floor has um, all of its effects built in, all of its processing built in. The only thing it doesn't have is a power amp, so it's a give and take, but it definitely has a lot more features to make up for the price difference. So after everything is said and done, you've got less headache because you have less equipment to deal with uh, with the Helix and um, price isn't really that much different. You can get a little small power amp, hell, the uh, uh, Power Stage 150, and it will still do the job. For a fairly comparable price between the two, you get a lot more flexibility and a lot less equipment headache. I have to run the four cable method with my pedal uh, to, to really fully, uh, with my HD 500X Line 6, uh, just to really expose all the potential. Whereas now, I mean, everything's built into the amp. I just needed a power amp to execute it and a foot switch to operate it. That's it, one cable. 
All right, our goals with our band is uh, my bassist runs Axe Effects, and um, you know I'm running the Helix. We're, we're trying to get this set up to where we've got everything modularized into probably three main units: my rack, his rack, and then um, our closed loop band system, for lack of a better term, which is going to run all of our in ears and our all our back tracks. Um, the device that's going to run all of that through MIDI is that's all going to be contained within that one unit. Uh, so you know we basically have three racks to carry in and that's our entire show minus drums. That's the goal at least. And that's why that this is so important to get this step right to get all of, of, of my rack gear kind of condensed. I wonder if I were to build some kind of, so I'm thinking I can build a padded, something that I can put right here and have it cover up these safely. Hopefully I can keep everything, you know, plugged in and put my Helix control right in there. I'd love to be able to store everything directly in the rack. I know it's gonna be heavy as hell, but it will be very much worth it. So that's that, it's basically, mounted now and it's just a matter of getting my power amp in there getting everything wired up and i should be able to rock so i really like doing these kinds of videos because you know it doesn't have to be educational sometimes it's just fun to play with equipment and get a feel for how many different ways you can set up a live rig um, whether that be super compact using only like a single pedal or a single HX stomp or something like that to run your entire rig. Or, you know, if you want to get a little more elaborate like this and have all these different options for different scenarios, it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. I think I'm going to get all this hooked up and, uh, you know, see what, see what kind of sounds I can get out of it. So thanks for watching. See you soon. Hey,